Hi guys. Uh, this is a book, uh, Graphics, Social and Political Protest Posters. And I was always intrigued by uh, this strange cover. And uh, when I turned the page, there were other pictures on the same idea. And uh, yeah, it has intrigued me. Also, when, when I made my research, I found out that there's a connection with uh, things like that. You know, what, what the heck, an electrical socket. So what, what and then, and then uh, this, for example, uh, a piece of billboards. So uh, I made my investigation and uh, let's check out who does those strange connections. François Robert, so, hi. Hi, bonjour. Merci bonjour. beaucoup, Jean-Benoît. Listen, I was bonjour. wondering a lot of things about you because I've seen so many things. So, uh, first, I want to, to present you. So, you were trained as a graphic designer in the art school in, uh, in Lausanne, uh, which is in the Swiss-French part of Switzerland. And then... Um, when you graduate, you, you went to, to Pirelli uh, in uh, Milano. How, how did you figure out to go there? Uh, there was an advertisement in uh, Graphis magazine uh, just about five months before my graduation. And I applied and I met them in Zurich. Uh, and there were a wonderful guy by the name of Pino Tovaglia. He's a, he's a great graphic designer in Milan. And there were other people. There were the woman, uh, the directress of the, the design center, which was called Pirelli Centro. It's, it's in, next to the train station in Milan. Uh, it was designed by Joe Ponti. And uh, after the interview, uh, I got a phone call or a telegram, I'm not, I don't remember, then I was accepted. And I was really surprised because I was among 30 other one designer to apply for this job. And I think 90% of all this designer were from both very famous school, uh, the Kunstgerbes Schule of Basel, which you were graduated uh, and applied, and, and the uh, Zurich Kunstgerbe Schule. So somehow it took me totally by surprise. Uh, then they would take a, a French Swiss for a not so well known design school. Yeah, you were very lucky. So, and then you yeah, went. I was, I was so lucky that that's amazing. And at one point, I didn't have to graduate. Uh, and my ex-wife told me that you cannot do this to your parents. You have to finish the school because I was ready to go. I was afraid I would lose the job. But you moved a lot. Like after, after Milano, you went to, to Johannesburg uh, in South Africa to work for, uh, for Unimark, right? It is correct. So that's an agency that, who was the boss again? Uh, the, the, the founder of Unimark International was probably one of the world's largest design firm in the world at the time. And the, the founder is Ralph Eckerstrom. Okay, but you also worked with uh, uh, Vignelli there, no? No. Oh, okay. um, I, I never worked with Massimo. I was in his footstep. Technically, I was like four years behind him because he worked at Unimark International and okay. opened the office in New York. Oh, right. I, I've All never right. worked for Massimo. I only did in, in the 80s some uh, several photo assignments on right. some of his projects. So after, after uh, nine months in, in uh, South Africa, you, you decided to follow the American dream? 
I followed the American dream. I went back to Milan for a few months, reapply for the job in Chicago for Unimark, and they say, yes, we have an opening. Please come over. And, and the rest is history. I mean, uh, Chicago really accepted me really well. Um, me and my ex-wife had a lot of friends. We really loved uh, the city. It was just quite unusual uh, for us because we were ready to continue potentially to go to New York. I had some offer with Chermayev and Geismar, and I had also some offer for Paul Rand. Oh, wow. So, that, yeah, I mean, they, they love... It's a, it's a, we're right, as a designer, as a graphic designer, right? Yeah. And then suddenly you have enough and you decide, oh, no, no, you, you open an, uh, an agency. What was yeah, that? I opened my own design agency. firm with two other partners. So in Johannesburg, Unimark went belly up. They went chapter 11 and bankrupt. Uh, and when I come in Chicago, uh, they also went bankrupt after a year. And I said, well, I hope it's not my fault because I really work <laughs> 12 hours a day as a graphic designer. So eventually I realized uh, the Unimark was pretty much on their way out somehow. Uh, they had an amazing reputation, but the, the, the founder were not really coming up, coming up with new idea financially, et cetera. So yeah, I, I decided so. might as well open my own design firm. Oh, wow. And then, then, and, and then uh, we, we opened a design firm somehow as a clinic, like there would be three designers. We do our separate work together. Uh, we borrow each other's portfolio to get bigger account. And it uh, probably in uh, 1978, we decided to form a partnership. We bought a building. Uh, Bowler coats and Robert. Yeah, bowler coats and shoes, basically. There was the joke internally. Okay. Bowler is a hat, coats is, a, is what it is, and, and, and Robert I was nicknamed Shoe. Yeah, because you always move. You always move. And, and, and yeah. suddenly you move even further, you decide to become a photographer, right? Yeah, decide enough of this partnership. It's like being married without sex, it's not fun. And uh, eventually, I say I'm going to buy a loft space and and start my own my own business as a photographer because it was really originally my dream. Yeah. But so I'm I'm sharing right now. Uh, I'm 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 trying to share the 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 website, your website of photography, and uh, I see that you have all kind of a. Uh, uh, subject and again here I see you are uh, I see nudes I see uh, skulls her herds comparison this very graphic so you you to me you are a photographer you love to make series and uh, there is here one series actually this is a series about uh, content uh, about uh, the purses and the pocket and the wallets of people and i want to go to a series so you you, you were a, a, pho a photographer we think like a designer and I, I would like to go to to one series do you see what i'm showing i don't know if you see that yes the okay. billboard yeah so uh, the series is called uh, obstructed landscape or interrupted landscape yeah and, and the theory came up with the idea that since uh, Jane, uh, my wife, we travel in twice a year between Chicago and Tucson, Arizona, and, and we're always in a highway. Uh, and I realized uh, since year 2000, it's amazing the amount of billboard, especially at the time, uh, things have changed now. Most, I, I would say 60% of the billboard today are empty. Uh, they don't advertise anymore. 
uh, and but also we took a lot of side road so, so we, you get quite boring to be on a highway for three days so we, we really traveled internally and so very much what those uh, those message uh, billboard are, are doing to the landscape the so you do you see what I'm showing you see those uh, uh, those interrupted landscape I want to uh, do you see this guy here the yellow one yeah. okay so I hope we were uh, looking at them one more for the fun I like when they break you know, like this. Yeah. As a graphic yeah. designer, I love to look at stuff like that. And a lot of them breaks uh, like the one you pointed out earlier because the company doesn't want to continue to advertise, uh, but they don't have a replacement for somebody else, another client. So they, they interchange all the panel and it became this amazing visual uh, beauty for me. Uh, I almost would want to go home with one of those uh, because they, they're really exquisite when, when all the typography and the message start to break down. Yeah, and then uh, out of there, in, uh, still in your website, and I, again, I hope that I, I've been showing things there, there is a little things that uh, made me curious. And I want to uh, stop sharing it, talk about that. Um, since I, I looked at that, that series, uh, I've, I, I'm not looking at my uh, household items the, 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 the same way. It's called face, Faces, right? Yeah. And here, you see, I have my, uh, uh, you, you know what's that? It's to, to cut eggs, right? Yeah. And since I, uh, I've been looking at your series, I, 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 I don't look at him the same way anymore. Um, so I uh, would like to, uh, yeah, what, what is this story about? What is this? Uh, I want to yeah. show some of them, but uh, uh, yeah, let me, let me share again. Um, Here I am. Do you do you see those guys? Yep. Yes. Uh, the the story started in the seventies with my brother. Uh, my brother and I we work in Milan together for a year and a half. I hire my brother basically to work with me in Milan. He was not a graphic designer at the time. He was a fine art engraver, and he landed in. in London with Pentagram and Pentagram at the time come up with every year uh, with a Pentagram paper. It, it's a little uh, booklet where they ask the, each designer to, to come up with an idea and my brother thought about doing a booklet about faces in with object. So he gave me a call in, in Chicago and they said, Francois, you need to help me to find more faces. And I'm not sure what he was talking about at the time. And, and he gave me an example. And I say, oh, okay, I think I can look for them. And it's been an obsession ever since. Uh, so in 78, uh, Face to Face came up uh, with Pentagram paper. And it was extremely successful. And from that on until uh, the end of uh, the 80s, we've been collecting a lot of object with faces and documenting ju just because it was just built in. I couldn't get out of it. And probably a lot of my friends thinks I'm a little crazy about the subject matter, but it, it's called paranoia. Uh, it's it's uh, some kind of, not a disease, but it's uh, it affects a lot of people who see object, who see faces in object. <laughs> but I see we all do. I, I, it's a series that makes me really happy because uh, sometimes I, I relate with the, the function of the object. So here we have a, I don't know how you call this, uh, a pulley. He's really a smiley guy. And then this guy makes me so uh, laugh because he looks so tired. He's, um, he's and, and, and unhappy to wake up. It's an alarm clock. 
it's an alarm clock, right? So he's very unhappy to get up to go yeah. to work. Yeah. And then this guy is super happy and inviting. Yep. He looks like a, 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 to wait things, but it's actually a sort of a electrical machine. So where do you find all those objects? Uh, it's a combination of a lot of places. I mean, flea market, antique store, uh, just roaming around the world since I do a lot of traveling with Jane around the world. So we find them. I remember I find a pretty large piece in London, but it was too large to take it back. So the guy in his, uh, in his uh, shop had a saw. So in the middle of a, in the middle of the street, I took this big piece and cut it uh, with, with an actual wood saw. Uh, so, I mean, it, 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 they, they, they appear everywhere and they're all calling me and they say, Francois, I'm here, look, take me, take me home. Uh, yeah, they needed, they needed someone, I think, to, to make us even more aware because some of are obvious, but I, I never saw that the the handle of a, a saw could be so inviting to say okay let's let's do uh let's work today let's you know she's telling me let's work today let's 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 cut this yeah you know? I, I can show uh, you look i'm already pissed off i'm all red so let's get going here let's go uh, and then here the the other little guy say okay okay let's do it and then and then we do the painting okay right yep so so they are those cute, cute stories. Uh, you, you also, I'm going to, to stop sharing here again. You also found uh, other things. And, uh, uh, oh no, let me go back to sharing because I want to see if we have, uh, uh, where is that? Hold on. I, I, I want to try to find something. Um, there uh, as a as a graphic designer this is not but this is not water that's vodka by the way so i wanted to share again uh my project i went to to quickly out which is the the book so faces right um yeah and then uh i wanna are you on are you on again yeah, do you see it? Yeah, I see it. And then I have uh, this picture here. And if I can make it uh, larger, do you see this picture? Yeah, sure. Okay. So you have to explain for young people what, what the heck is going on here because not, not pe nobody knows what is, what is it. It's you. Yeah, it is me as a graphic designer. Uh, probably at age 19, uh, before I was graduated, I did a lot of work for my older brother. He was in the theater and I was also involved with the senior club and in my college. And uh, I used to design a lot of, uh, poster and leaflets. And this is the way we used to use type. You used to have a sheet called letter set and it was a competitor called Mechanoma, and you just press the, the type on your artwork. Uh, it's, it's a transfer, and, and it's very simple, but it's, uh, it's reasonably difficult. When I think I would have to do this today, it would not be that easy. Yeah, we were doing by hands, and then you made fonts, right? So one for Mechanoma, I think. Yeah. And then on, under the same concept, one for letter set. Exactly. You, you still have some sheets? Uh, some royalty? No. No, but you, you know, people find those old sheets. No, of, uh, 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 of those two sheets, I do not own any of the sheets. So it's oh. a little sad, but it would have been fun to have one. And then uh, I found another uh, uh, alphabet that really in, intrigued me. And before uh, we explain exactly what it is, um, I would like right away to go to, um, to show something and then we can talk about it. 
So it's a very, very interesting alphabet. So uh, I would like to stop to share again. And uh, again, it's uh, sort of a font, font object, but I would like to, to cut here with the, and try uh, something with a little movie, hold on. Um, Over time, as always, the law sought to control violence within the groups. So did philosophers, clerics, statesmen seek to regulate the destructive power of war. The concept of a just war emerged, suggesting that war is justified only when certain conditions were met. Waged as a last resort or in self-defense. Force used is proportional. And if, whenever possible, civilians are spared from violence. So I'm I'm stopping sharing. This was a a little uh, um, a movie for uh, from the agency uh, Thirst in uh, in Chicago. And, uh, I would like to um, uh, ask you because this is also related to found objects. So what is uh, this story about? Uh, I'm not sure if you have the the skeleton that I'm holding the photo by any chance and I find in the 90s I send you. No, not here. Hold on. Uh, maybe I can find it. Hold on. Uh, I email it to you. I know, I know, I know. Hold on. So you mean uh, I'm going to share. So you mean you, you mean this picture here? Yes. Okay. So uh, before I started, uh, you were pointing out uh, uh, the video then, uh, and, lit and before that we did a book, uh, Rick Valesanti and I, uh, and his team uh, called FIRST. Uh, by the way, FIRST do not exist anymore. Uh, so they, the, the three partner have separated and they have started their own business. <coughs> So, so basically, uh, in the nineties, I came across uh, a notice then a school not too far away from my second home outside Chicago had a and an auctions. They were selling everything in a school tables, and, and it included some lockers, and there were uh, three locker for sale for fifty dollars, and and I was totally intrigued. So whatever you do, they say, well, you open the first locker and it's empty. You open the second locker and it's empty. You see somebody hanging uh, from the top of the locker, and it happened to be a skeleton. They were used originally for some anatomy classes, and. And I close it very rapidly because I say, oh my God, for $50, I just win the big prize. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I will bring it to my studio. And then, which I did. And, and in year 2000, it's still hanging in, in my studio in, in a dark room. Uh, and I say, well, I think I'm going to do something with it. Uh, the economy sucks. Uh, 2007, uh, the work, the workload was not coming the way I used to be accustomed to. But to my pleasure, uh, I was happy that the economy went down because it gave me a lot more times to do my own fine art. It's, it's not reflective of all the other photographer because a lot of people really struggle, especially my assistants or my ex-assistant. And, but I decided 
Wow, and I came across another uh, piece of news. Uh, there was a company in Tulsa uh, was selling uh, bone, animal bones, human bones, fig, fig bones uh, for, uh, for medical school. And, and I approached them and I say, w by any chance, can I bring you this one and, and send it to you? And can I get one It's completely disarticulated and in excellent conditions? Mine was pretty beat up. And, and sure enough, the guy said, yes, we'll give you that much. And, uh, and probably a week later, I arrived FedEx in my studio in Tucson, uh, a complete disarticulated uh, skeleton. It's, it's 206 pieces. And I say, well, the, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the swastika. And I did a template on a big uh, piece of paper. It's about six feet wide. And I start to lay it out all the, uh, the bones, every part of the human body and and when I lift uh, the template and, and I saw the result, I just got a chill in, in my spine. I say, I'm, I'm really on something here. And because of so the technology, I don't think I could have shot this in four by five, uh, which I was very accustomed to all the years. And, and eventually uh, with my Azelblad, uh, had a video uh, built in. So I put my, my Azoblad in the ceiling and I work on the floor with my laptop and, and start to organize all the bone on every template that, that I came across. Now, why the alphabet? When I was done with 16 iconic image, uh, I decided to do the alphabet. I said, well, what the hell? Uh, it would be nice to build words uh, like war, like uh, KKK. And, and for another month or two, uh, I decided to be on my knee and do the complete alphabet. So I've, I've spent quite a lot of time on my knee uh, in my studio. So I, by halfway through, I decided to buy a knee pad. So it really helped me to stay down there and uh, and the the project went viral so uh, i would i received uh, in 2008 uh the lucy award for best fine art with 18000 entry yeah uh, i'm i'm showing this as you uh as you're talking and i i think uh, you uh there is a uh, this this beautiful uh book that that you you have you have it with you the the yes. book uh, from which we were showing the the movie so this was a sort of a, a um, trailer for the book can you uh, do you have yes. it? Mm -hmm. uh, I can show you uh, a very large version of of the book oh yeah 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 it's beautiful. So, Sorry for the reflections. No, it's okay. It's nice. Okay. We see so, it. It's a book called Stop the Violence. It was produced in uh, South Korea by a wonderful designer. Wow. And, and uh, there were going to be an exhibition as well. And somehow a ferry boat uh, sank in South, uh, South Korea and 900 people died. So the government decided to cancel the exhibitions due to uh, the bad press they had about so many people have lost their life. But going back to, uh, to Rick Valacenti, this is, this is the book uh, that basically uh, was produced by Rick, myself, and Color Classic, an outstanding printer in Chicago, Color Classic. And, and uh, this is this is a page and i'm not sure if you see it well we see it yes yeah and and if you look closer 
the letter A, each letter A was was uh, printed in white. Oh yeah. And yeah. on every page, the B, all the B were eliminated and printed in white. And it's basically uh, the whole book about uh, the speech then uh, uh, ex-president Obama uh, presented when he received the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, yeah. So, that, uh, it was a very successful book. Uh, they only printed 2,000 copies. It went off in a month. And, and uh, thanks to uh, Call a Classic and Rick Valacenti, uh, it, it was really something very satisfying to see it produced. Yeah. Um, and very popular for that reason. No, it looks it looks absolutely beautiful, and that's why I came to you because I I saw those pictures uh, in in many in many places, and that's how I was starting my my uh, my session today. Uh, and now I want to um, go back uh, to to your website and show a last uh, series, which. It also kind of um, intrigues me, and it's called uh, Left Behind. And uh, can you talk about that, uh, that series? Yes. Uh, when we arrived in Tucson, uh, Jane and I, uh, about uh, 2000, we arrive in year 2000, but we were introduced around 2012 uh, by a wonderful uh, Mexican photographer from the Sonora, from Hermosillo. Her name is Alejandra Platt. And we, they were talking about uh, what's happening between Tucson and uh, Nogales, uh, the Mexican border. And it's about on an average of 200 people that died every year trying to uh, get a better life in the United States. Uh, it's, they are all called undocumented immigrants. We don't call them illegal. They are undocumented. And if they feel like they will have a better life in this part of the world. And, and but we decide to join the Samaritan and, and help them to carry water uh, in some very specific area of the desert. So a whole bunch of people on Saturday will go on a van and all equipped with backpack, lots of water and food. And we used to, they used to know very well all the trail works. There's not a million trail. And there's also a way to tell if they use the same trail or not, because if they don't pick the water nor the food we leave on, on, their, on their camp, uh, we know they are going elsewhere. So basically also the, the effort was to give them as much chance to survive. And, and also we picked up all the trash. So on a way out, we used to pick up all the empty bottle of uh, plastic they leave behind because eventually also all those objects you see here and, and especially the USA socks here we promote the USA as this amazing country and, and, and they really want to come. They even wear socks with it say USA. But a lot of times uh, the people, when an helicopter lands because they, they see a whole bunch of, of undocumented immigrants in a desert, they scatter everything that it's heavy to, to carry around. So when a, an helicopter land, there's so much dust, a lot of people run away, hit cactus, uh, broke their legs, broke their arms, and, but they leave all this stuff behind. So they run as light as possible. So those objects are something that I did collect uh, for long times. And I also asked uh, some of the Samaritan to share their, their collection with me. So I made a book 
and, and showing uh, what all the subjects are all about. I mean, uh, it's a collection again, and uh, it's, a, it's a really touching collection. Uh, it's really a sad, sad story because uh, eventually I do not have a solutions myself. I can do as much as I can. It's not, so far, it's reasonably not illegal to help them, but you cannot give them a, 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 a ride. Uh, you cannot transport them physically. You can just, hopefully, they, they will be able to catch somebody on the other side to give them a ride to where they have a destination. Uh, I would say eight, more than 80% have a connection in the US already. Uh, but what is really sad, uh, and it, this is a quick example, uh, and it's been told by Alejandra Platt, that they, they find somebody had lost the group and he was completely lost and he was on his last leg. And he told Alejandra that basically he was leaving for 20 years in America, but his grandparents, his mother, sorry, his mother died, so he decided to go uh, to the funeral. So he find a coyote to get him across the border to go in Mexico and uh, pay the last respect to his mother. And, and he had to find another coyote to come back to the U.S. to go rejoin his family. And, and it's, it, it is really sad when you think about the amount of money he spent uh, and the energy he spent and risking his life to just say goodbye to his mother. It's quite incredible. Um, I mean, it's really touching for me. That's why uh, we're finishing your, your looking at your series with this beautiful letter that also could tell a story uh, of maybe uh, someone who passed the border with a letter of uh, his daughter, you know, to remember or some member of his family. Uh, so this is great. I have uh, here a little piece of paper and uh, I want to finish with, with this. Uh, uh, thanking you uh, for this uh, fantastic opportunity that you gave me to, to have you here. But um, we were mentioning uh, Massimo Vignelli and then uh, uh, you told me that he made something on your, on your, on your bio why people should, uh, why clients should hire you. And as a graphic designer, um, I, um, I uh, quite uh, like it. Uh, first, those are 10 points. First, he understand the briefing. Second, he adds to it in a brilliant way. Third, he shoots and delivers the assignment in time. Fourth, the work turns out the, to be better than it was planned. Uh, fifth, is a terrific photographer. Six, is a great human being. Seven, he's an equally good graphic designer. Eight, he is great fun. Nine, he has a cool sense of humor. And 10, is great, it is great to work with. So, and then Massimo Vinelli say, need to say anything more? Love, Massimo. <laughs> <laughs> I like it very much. <laughs> so, thank you. Is there anything you want to say? Yes, uh, what I want to say, I want to thank oh, yeah, everybody. I want, uh, I want to say uh, thanks to everybody for watching this video in the future. Also, be safe, everybody. And, and this is one of the book. Oh, and yeah. we'll, finish, we'll finish with a big smile, so. Well, well, I don't know. Okay, oh yeah, that's fantastic. But we didn't see, come on, we didn't see the, the, the other, other hand. Do you want to uh, present us in person the, the skeleton? Uh, th th this is a book that, that Jane, my wife, puts together. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a children's book. It's called Find a Face. And, Show and it, it again. Show it again. And we're going to, to end with this. Find a face. Beautiful. And uh, you, didn't, you didn't have the skeleton in person? 
Yes. Oh. He's next to me. I, wa I always wanted to meet him. Yep. Thank I, you. I, I'm not sure if it's a he or he or she, but th no, this, no. Is the, this is the, per the person uh, with all the respect to this person that I use for to stop the violence. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome, Jean-Benoit. You're doing a great job. Bye. Bye.